Marion and I fumbled our way through the dark passage, feeling somehow this hidden tunnel might lead us to Anne Catherick. Was it possible that Sir Percival had established a connection between his residence and the asylum which housed Anne? Hey, stop right there. We don't get many visitors here. Did Sir Percival Glyde send you? Well, you've come to the right place. But she's held in a very secure area. Orders of Mr. Glyde himself. Well... If Sir Percival sent you, then you'll know the code to navigate through this place. Where's my dinner? Who was someone, have you? And you say, what's that a cat named Dan? Hello, I've been expecting you. Won't you come in? Noah? Yes, but she doesn't like to be called Anne. She prefers Laura. Am I the one who's confused?
To our amazement, we rescued Laura Fairley from the asylum and not Anne Catherick. We uncovered the diabolical plot of Fosco. After she was captured, Anne fell ill and died of a weak heart. Fosco seized the opportunity to have Anne and Laura switch places. So, Glyde and Fosco buried Anne Catherick in Laura Fairley's clothes and confined Laura to the asylum in Anne's clothing. No one would believe the feeble cries of this crazy woman who said she was Laura Fairley. The deception was complete. For all intents and purposes, Laura Fairley was dead, leaving Glyde, as her husband, the sole beneficiary of her estate. With Laura seemingly dead, Glyde and Fosco were free to split the inheritance money. But Glyde was obsessed with another secret, that he was born out of wedlock and had no legal right to the Glyde fortune. Anne Catherick knew his secret and paid for it with her life. Twenty years earlier, Mrs. Catherick, Anne's mother, gave Glyde the keys to the vestry in exchange for expensive gifts. After he inherited Laura's money, Glyde was so worried his secret would be discovered that he visited the church vestry again to view the old record books he had doctored so many years ago. As fate would have it, he knocked over a lantern in that old broken-down church and died trying to escape the fiery blaze. With Marion's blessing, Laura and I were married, both in a penniless state. Six months later, Laura's uncle died without children of his own, leaving Laura as rightful heir. I'm happy to report that Laura is expecting our firstborn, who will carry on the tradition of the Fairley family. Whatever became of Count Fosco, you ask? With Glyde dead, and Laura Fairley restored to health and proper status, Fosco feared for his life and fled to Paris. But that is a story for another day.